gamers by popular demand today we are going to take a whirlwind tour of every single graphics quality setting in valorant we're going to talk about what each setting does we're going to look at a visual comparison of each and every setting we are going to do all of that in under 10 minutes but before we get started a little shameless self-promotion please hit that subscribe button down below thanks let's get into it the material quality setting has the largest impact on the look of the game Every pixel gets its color computed by a tiny GPU program called a shader. Modern GPUs can run thousands of these shaders in parallel. Material quality controls the complexity of Valorant shaders, and turning it down to low will cause the game to use simpler shaders. This trades visual quality for less GPU work. Material quality does not change the amount of work that needs to happen on the CPU, so it can increase FPS, but only on computers that are GPU bound. Watch the crates in the gun skin as we switch between high and low. The game looks pretty basic when material quality is cranked all the way down. Texture quality changes the way the game engine selects what textures to show. On machines with excess video RAM, the setting doesn't do anything. On machines without enough VRAM to hold full resolution versions of visible textures, setting it to low causes the engine to target smaller but lower quality textures. Valorant sets the default based on your computer's VRAM. Tuning the setting down rarely has any impact on performance, and it may or may not impact the visuals depending on your machine. Detail quality adjusts artistic elements and visual effects in the world that don't impact gameplay. In this scene, take a look at the vines, the tree, and the lights. On low detail quality, the vines disappear entirely. The tree looks a lot simpler. The glow from the lights is removed. Detail quality is one of the few settings that can improve performance on almost all machines. Removing objects from the world reduces the work required for both the CPU and the GPU. Detail quality also changes the look of some abilities. On high quality, Viper's wall has tendrils reaching out from the base. On low quality, those tendrils disappear. Low quality doesn't look as nice, but my brain finds some of these details distracting, so I usually turn detail quality down to low. UI quality is pretty subtle. The difference is most visible in parts of the UI that blur the background. Watch the player portraits area at the top of the screen. On high UI quality, the green and red segments will blur the background. On low UI quality, the segments are just transparent. The settings menu also has a background blur that follows the UI quality setting. Vignette darkens the corners of the screen to help you focus on the center of the screen. Watch the border of the frame as we transition between on and off. This is one of those details that I only notice if I'm really looking for it, or if I'm doing a side-by-side -side comparison. Next up is Vertical Sync or V-Sync. Unless you're seeing screen tearing, you want V-Sync turned off. Screen tearing is where your monitor shows one image from the current frame and one image from the previous frame. VSync locks the game's FPS to your monitor's refresh rate, fixing the tearing, but also hurting performance and input latency. If you want to cap your frame rate, use the in-game frame rate limiter instead. Anti-aliasing helps smooth out jagged edges on objects where the pixels don't perfectly line up. Watch the edge of the wall to the left of my crosshair. With anti-aliasing set to MSAA 4X, it's mostly smooth as I move the gun around. With anti-aliasing turned off, the jaggies show up. Anti-aliasing does cost some performance on the GPU, but I keep it on because the jaggies read as movement to me. Anisotropic filtering, or AF, adjusts the quality of textures at off angles from the camera. Most commonly, this will be the ground in the distance, or the side and extremities of the player's gun. When we turn down AF in this scene, the ground that's close to the site gets blurry. We can no longer see the cracks in the stone. We also lose some detail on the barrel of the Odin. Some gun skins look muddy with AF turned down. Double check this setting if something looks off on your machine. Improved clarity increases contrast and midtones to give you a more clear picture. I can't tell whether this setting is on or off from a still image. To my eye, the difference is really minor. It does come with a moderate cost to GPU performance, so I'd only really consider turning this one on if your machine is CPU bound. Stylistically, I haven't decided if I like improved clarity on or off. Leave me a comment and let me know what you prefer. 
Experimental sharpening makes edges look sharper. After getting used to playing with experimental sharpening turned on, the game looks blurry to me whenever I turn it off. Watch the stairs in the corner of the right wall. It's easier for me to judge depth with the setting turned on. Again, this one has a bit of a GPU cost, so best used on machines that are CPU bound. Bloom changes the look of weapons and abilities that emit light. It's very apparent on Sova's bow. When Bloom is enabled, the bow glows. When Bloom is disabled, it looks very flat, almost as if the blue is painted on. Distortion warps the world behind the source of the effect. Sniper scopes are probably the most visible example. Take a look at the periphery of the scope and notice how the text on the Kingdom Industries building is distorted. When disabled, the scope darkens slightly but no longer warps the periphery. I find distortion distracting when trying to snipe, so I almost always leave the setting off. Cast Shadows controls whether first-person weapons and arms get dynamic shadows. This setting does not change shadows in the environment, nor does it change what you see for other players. In this scene, you can see the shadows banding down the side of the gun. Often they look totally fine, but on some problematic angles like this one, they just move a whole bunch. I find dynamic shadows distracting, so I turn cast shadows off. Multi-threaded rendering is available on machines with newer hardware, and it's on by default on machines that can support it. The setting lets Valorant use an additional CPU core for rendering work. It has no impact on the final visuals, but the additional parallelization can improve FPS. When disabled, all CPU rendering work happens on the rendering thread and shows up under the CPU render time stat. When enabled, the game will start a new thread and send part of that work over. The additional thread is tracked under the CPU RHI time stat. I recommend turning on multi-threaded rendering if your machine supports it. That is all of the graphics quality settings in Valorant. If you enjoyed this video, please like and hit that subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow. Let me know what you'd like to see next time. Maybe how to tune your machine to get the best possible performance out of Valorant. Maybe we do a deeper dive on input latency and how it works. Let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, friends, be kind to one another and frag out.